Many people say that the golden age of thrash metal happened between the mid 80s and the early 90s. But in 1991, Metallica released the Black Album, and after that, so many other bands decided to change and have a more stripped down and accessible sound. This resulted in some pretty good albums, such as Megadeth's Countdown to Extinction and Testament's The Ritual. But some other bands had albums from that time period people didn't like. The one that comes to mind is Force of Habit by Exodus in 1992. But years later in the 2000s, Thrash Metal had a resurgence and Exodus released one of their best albums of their career, which is called Tempo of the Damned. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about all of that. I'll go into a little of the history leading up to it. I'll talk about the songs, the music, and there's some pretty cool uh, trivia with it. For example, we'll talk about how Kirk Hammett was involved in the album. I'll be talking about all of that. The story begins in 1992. Exodus released Force of Habit, which was an album that catered to the musical trends at that time, being a little slower, a little grungier, a little more accessible. But after the band toured with that album, the band started having problems and eventually split up. During that time, Gary Holt and Tom Hunting formed another band called War Dance and Exodus did not reunite until 1997 when they got back together with their original vocalist named Paul Bailoff and they recorded a live album called Another Lesson in Violence. But then tragedy struck again. Paul Bailoff died of a stroke on February 2nd, 2002. So they got their former vocalist Steve Zectro Sousa to come back into the band. And with that, they created this album called Tempo of the Damned. The album was released on February 2nd, 2004, celebrating 20 years. I have gotten the date wrong, otherwise I would have done this last month. But anyway, let's continue. The album was also produced by Andy Sneap and released on Nuclear Blast Records. This is actually the only album with Salsa in the 2000s until he reunited in 2014 with Blood In, Blood Out, and 2021's Persona Non Grata. This is also the last album to feature a longtime uh, guitar player, Rick Holt, but he did make a guest appearance on Persona Non Grata. So if you're wondering how does Kirk Hammett fit into all this, this is actually the only studio album which has a song credited to him, not counting the 1982 demo and the 1997 live release, but Kirk Hammett gets a writing credit on the song Impaler, I'll talk more about that as I talk about the songs. A lot of the song titles are a play on words. Uh, for example, the opening track is called Scar Spangled Banner, which is a play on the Star Spangled Banner. The song is about war and violence in America. There's also a line in that song that says, uh, I'm not a patriot, I'm a hatriot, which is interesting because Steve Zetro has a son who named his band uh, Hatriot. Then we have War is My Shepherd, a play on the Lord is My Shepherd. It's an awesome song, has some great screams in the chorus. Lyrics are also very catchy, and they have lines like, uh, Praise the Lord and Pass the Ammunition. I really like this song. The song is about a person who rejects religion, but puts their faith in war and owning a gun. Shroud of Urine is based on the Shroud of Turin, the cloth that was used to bury Jesus, and how some people believe it was fake. Then we have Sealed with a Fist, uh, based on the expression Sealed with a Kiss. Songs about domestic violence. The story is about a woman who starts to nag her husband, so he begins to beat her. But in the end of the story, uh, she gets a gun and kills him. Let's talk about some of the other songs. The big song on this album is Black Rain. What's interesting is that it's the number one most streamed song on Spotify and YouTube music. You would think it would be something like The Toxic Waltz or something from Bonded by Blood, but that's not the case. I think this is one of the catchiest songs. The main riff is fairly simple. It sticks in your head. The song is about revenge. In this story, the protagonist feels betrayed by a former associate, so the protagonist is threatening this person by saying uh, they will be added to their black. Forward March is one of the longest songs in the album. The song is 7 minutes and 39 seconds long. It's an old school thrasher. I read a lot of comments about people saying that this song has one of the best guitar solos. Zetro also gives a great vocal performance at this point, and he's almost like rapping the verses of that in one point in the Colin song. Colin the Herd is a thrash metal song with some old school vibes. 
lyrics about how certain individuals in society need to be cleansed or eliminated in order to improve the overall state of humanity. The people in the song are described as being scum, garbage, or a disease plaguing the world. Throwing Down is another old school thrasher, just like the rest of the songs on the album. Songs about personal empowerment. The lyrics suggest that one should live the way that they want, not follow the pressures of society. The song also sends a message that forgiving and forgetting is a sign of weakness. Let's talk about track number nine, which is called Impaler. The song was written by Kirk Hammett, Gary Holt, Paul Bailoff, and Tom Hunting. This is the only ex of the song that credits Kirk Hammett. If the song sounds familiar, it's because one of the riffs from the song was used in uh, Metallica's song Trapped Under Ice, which was from Ride the Lightning. The song is based on a common theme in metal where a person hunts down their prey during the night to kill them and the people live in this place in constant fear. The last song is the title track, Temple of the Damned, not counting the bonus track I will talk about in a minute. The song is about temptation, submission, and the allure of darkness. The song introduces the concept of a ministry of sin, this suggests people are willing to use dark power to their advantage. The song also hints at people forming a cult. This can be inferred with the line, the high priest of the blood. There's a bonus cut, and it's called Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, the ACDC cover. They've done uh, supposedly three uh, ACDC covers. I know only about two of them, but supposedly there's one of Beating Around the Bush, but I know of Overdose from Fabulous Disaster. He really does a good... Uh, Bon Scott impression, so for that reason, I've always liked their ACDC covers. Shortly after the release of this album, uh, Steve Zetrosalsa left Exodus during their South American tour in 2004. According to Gary Holt, he left uh, just as the tour was about to start in Mexico City. For this reason, the band was not happy with him. In retrospect, Zetro has admitted that he was unhappy at the time. I read one source saying that he was working as a carpenter and went back to his day job. But then another article said that he never gave a specific reason for leaving. He eventually rejoined Exodus for a third time in 2014. People were surprised that he came back to the band because he said that he did not ever have plans to return, but Zetro said that people change. He was then replaced by Rob Dukes, who was the band's lead vocalist until 2014. Exodus released three studio albums with Rob Dukes. Zetro's first album, Post Tempo, was Blood In, Blood Out. Fans were happy to have him back. The band is still active. The current lineup consists of Gary Holt and Lee Atlas, uh, bassist Jack Gibson, drummer Tom Hunting, and lead vocalist Steve Zetro Salsa. Tom Hunting is the only original member left in Exodus. The band has been performing and releasing new music. Their most recent album, Persona Non Grata, was released on November 19th, 2021. So here's my review of Persona Non Grata from 2021, right there. Please uh, like this video. It helps me with YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe if you're not already. I do rock and metal reviews. I do rankings. I do more. I'll see you in the next one.